Hey everyone, me Kevin here. We have some new details on the child tax credit. I'll talk a little bit about unemployment and some other updates as well, but let's get into this new child tax credit because the 22 page bill has not yet officially been released, but the Washington Post got a hold of it and they give us some new details, uh, some of which we don't yet know about. So in case you're not familiar yet, there's a child tax credit. It used to be around $1,000 per child, it used to be around $500 per child. And basically when you'd go to file your taxes based on how many children you had, you would just owe a little bit less in tax money. Well now, this is being kind of transformed into almost universal basic income for children. Biden wants to bump this from what used to be $500,000, $2,000 under Ivanka. That was one of her pushes uh, with Donald Trump. He wants to push this to $3,000 per child if the child is under 18 years old. And if a child is under six years old, they would get $3,600 uh, per year. Who knows, maybe that's diaper money, the extra $600, because diapers are expensive. But anyway, uh, this benefit, we now have some new details, would phase out after $75,000 of income for individual filers and $150,000 for couples. Biden's plan is estimated to cost $120 billion per year. And we have not yet seen any kind of correspondence between Biden and Romney. Remember, Romney has a plan that is similar to this, actually potentially provides more money to children under six, but Romney's plan would cut from welfare and the $10,000 SALT tax deduction. Both of those are things that Biden tentatively wants to maintain. So we'll see if Biden and Romney are going to have any kind of merger. But right now, Biden's really pushing his plan. It's this 22-page bill uh, that was put forward. Again, cost $120 billion per year. And there's some more interesting facts about this. Columbia University already released some research on this, indicating that Biden's plan would reduce childhood poverty by 54%. Under Biden's plan, the IRS would begin sending payments out on July 1st via direct deposit. So it's kind of like getting your direct deposit for your stimulus check. I imagine there'll be a mail system as well. The mail is significantly smaller. And these would be monthly stimulus payments, essentially. I, I, I mean, I, you can't really call them stimulus. It's really, I mean, the number, the amount is really relief more than anything. But really what, you're, what they're doing is they're taking the child tax credit and rather than you getting it at tax time and getting a tax refund. Uh, if you're even eligible for a tax refund, you're just buttering it out over the year. Uh, so you're getting this monthly distribution. The cool thing is that we found out in this plan is that you would get the money even if you owe taxes and if you accidentally get the child tax credit, but you're not actually the custodian of that child at that moment, because maybe there's a divorce or who knows, whatever, the IRS is including a safe harbor provision, meaning you won't actually have to pay the money back. So if you get it, it's yours. Kind of true with the stimulus checks as well. So right now, uh, remember, the current law is we have $2,000 as a child tax credit per year. But the problem is, if you don't actually, let's say you have six children and, and that's $6,000 in taxes, you would actually have to make $6,000 in income to have that $6,000 tax credit reduce your tax liability to zero, letting you get a larger tax refund. The current bill actually changes that. And it says that, no, this would be a refundable tax credit, which means you get it even if you don't owe that much money in taxes, which again, is really a way of having a, a universal basic income almost for children. They're not going to want to brand it as this. Otherwise, it'll get it'll come across as too far left. But it'll be this basic income coming every single month for children that you have uh, whether or not you actually owe taxes or you don't owe taxes. The, the big criteria, the big cutoff though, is that you have to make less than $75,000 as an individual to get the full amount. You have to make less than 150 k to get the full amount as a uh, filing jointly couple. Now, under the plan, children will also be required to have social security numbers, but parents will not. This does mean that undocumented workers or individuals in the country with uh, children who were born here who have social security numbers, they would be eligible to receive the money. Also, Joe Biden uh, last week held a two-hour meeting with 10 Republicans, and the Republicans were beating up Biden to try to get him to go to $300 in unemployment pay per year or I'm sorry, per week and ending that at June or so the end of June. That's about three months earlier than what Biden wants to do. Biden wants $400 per week and wants to end the unemployment boost September 30th. Biden initially expressed some openness into possibly negotiating this, but a few minutes after this topic came up, Biden came back, circled back, and apparently said that he's, quote, definitely sticking with September. So we have this clear guidance from Biden that he wants this unemployment pay through September 30th. Not clear yet, though, if he's going to go for three or four hundred dollars, probably leaning towards four hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars is pretty much dead. It's not even coming up in conversations right now. 
Also, uh, this appeared to be a, another turning point where Chris Coons, a Democrat, said that Biden has is, is now basically making it, quote, perfectly clear that if he spends months and months chasing Republican partners who never end up emerging, he's doing a real disservice to the country. So in other words, sorry, Republicans, thank you, but no thank you. Now, obviously, a lot of Republicans are railing on Biden for saying, hey, you said you were going to be bipartisan. Now you're not. Biden's saying, hey, look, I got to take care of the people. And uh, this may be why we had that really weird short meeting with Republicans after that meeting where they're like, yeah, we talked to Biden and uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, kind of some interesting extra insight really shows Biden doubling down here on uh, some of the things that he wants to see for the American people. Joe Manchin has also softened his stance last week on MSNBC's Morning Joe. He says, quote, I don't want to go down the path we went down in 2009 where we negotiated for eight to nine months straight and still didn't have a product. And what he wants to do basically is, is be a part of the solution now and get a bill passed in now. Now, what I want to do at this point is I want to quickly just bring up Bernie here, who's talking about the idea of having more targeted stimulus checks. Let's hear his reaction to this. Now, uh, Bernie does not have the ultimate power here, but he does have a lot being on the Senate Finance Committee. So let's listen in to see what he says. One idea being floated in the Senate, included by some Democrats, is to phase out checks for individuals making more than $50,000 a year. Uh, you called that proposal unbelievable and said, quote, in other words, working class people who got checks from Trump would not get them from Biden. Brilliant. Obviously, you're being sarcastic there. Uh, it's clear you don't support it. You heard Janet Yellen earlier in the show. She said, obviously, she thinks that somebody who makes $60,000 a year uh, should be getting these relief checks. But she wasn't willing to commit to $75,000. Uh, where do you think the cutoff should be? Well, I think what we have done in the past and what we have promised the American people, we've said two things uh, in the last month. We said, we're gonna get you $2,000, that's $600 plus $1,400. And what we're gonna do is say that everybody, a single person, individual, 75,000 or lower, and a couple of $150,000 or lower will be eligible for that full $2,000, 600 plus 1,400. Now, when people said, we don't want rich people to get uh, that benefit. I understand that, I agree. And what we need to do is have a strong cliff so it doesn't kind of spill over to people making $300,000. And that's what I support, and that's what I think most people understand. But to say to a worker in Vermont or California or any place else, that if you're making you know, $52,000 a year, you are too rich to uh, get this help, the full benefit, I think that that's absurd. And it's also, from a political point of view, a little bit absurd that you would have under Trump these folks getting the benefit, but under Biden, who is fighting hard for the working class of this country, they would not get that full benefit. So I think from a policy point of view, we've got to do the right thing, and that's 75000 and 150000 for a couple. From a political point of view, it is absurd to be telling working class people, somebody has a decent union job, they're making fifty-five, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. Sorry, you're not eligible for the program. Makes no sense to me at all, nor do I think it makes sense to the American people. Wow. Wow. Great. Uh, I mean, honestly, you know, whether whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, I mean, it, it makes sense, right? Like, why why under Trump would people making up to $75,000 individually and one fifty dollars as married filing jointly get the stimulus check? But under Biden, it should be more narrow. It's interesting. It's an interesting argument from a political point of view. It's not one that I've thought about before. Uh, I, I do think it's interesting that Bernie is, is saying, hey, he's basically open to a stronger cliff. That basically means faster phase outs, right? So that way, it's not $5 you're losing for every extra $100 you make. Maybe it's $15, $20 that you lose of a stimulus check for every extra $100 you make. That'll prevent... Uh, sort of the larger incomes where you get couples making, you know, $200,000, $225,000 a year, that'll prevent those couples from getting a stimulus a check. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how, how these phase outs obviously expand. We'll see what happens. Uh, and it depends on how they word this as well, because obviously a $1,400 check goes a lot further than the $1,250 did in terms of phase outs. The 12, uh, or I'm sorry, the $1,200 check. The $1,200 check fully phased out for a couple at about one ninety nine. dollars $1,400 check would go a little further, and depending on how they look at the math, 
Are they gonna include the 600 for the phase out? So a full 2000, full 2000 might not phase out until a much later, maybe as close to 300 to $350,000, as we saw with prior math while this was being debated. So anyway, those are things that we're all going to have to pay attention to. But uh, it, I wouldn't be surprised if we see those stronger cliffs, as Bernie talks about. On COVID, the UK variant is spreading through the United States much more rapidly. It's currently doubling in prevalence every about 10 days. The variant is more contagious, and the United Kingdom actually thinks there's a small chance it could even be more deadly, although that hasn't been proven yet. The evidence link for that is softer. We've also recently seen deaths rise to an average of se an average a seven day average, excuse me, of 4,112 per day. Yikes. Okay, folks, there's the update for today. Enjoy the Super Bowl. If you're watching this after the Super Bowl, I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully your team won. And folks, we'll see you in the next one.